We have a surprise guest. <laughs> I look. Yeah, have a look, Tom. Yeah, look good, yeah? Come in. We look good. Yeah. You like it, Tom? Looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, look really cool. <laughs> it's giving us the double thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. We are on a little road trip. We are going to Phuket again. We only went to Phuket last week. This time we have our friend Katie, who's come to stay with us. She went off for a few days to Koh Lanta on her own, she's come back and she's decided to fly out from Phuket so she's changed her flight and we thought that we would take her there so we've hired a car for a couple of days, we're going to do some more shopping in Phuket but uh, it's kind of like a mini break and we're going to be staying in that same hotel we stayed in last time because Liz got another deal on it uh, so we're halfway through the journey and we just thought we'd stop off this is, I think this is Pangna town itself which the bay is named after and as you can see it's rather uh, rather beautiful countryside. Whoop! Oh. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> first things first, you may be able to see behind me the, um, not only is the Dodger in situ, but just over my shoulder you can probably see a stainless bar. That stainless bar is not actually part of the construction, but whilst we were away, Lek and Wit, the stainless guys, cracked on and have put temporarily where they believe these stainless struts to go. What do you think, Lek? Good. Beautiful. We want to make like this. Uh, I think we make same like this. Eh? So we're having, it's going to bolt down the side. Yeah. It's a, it's a bracket that comes over. Yeah. So like this, like but, this but okay. smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk a bit more about that uh, at another time. What I wanted to do was to talk about the rigging. It's a long and drawn out complicated story. But in a nutshell, what we think we have worked out is that we don't need to replace the rigging. We've had two independent people tell us that our rigging is actually in very good condition. And a third person had even said, if you were to replace the rigging now, you would be replacing it with substandard materials. So you're probably better off keeping the rigging if it appears to be in good condition. What this means is, is that uh, we could go back to the insurance company and say, would a rigging inspection uh, report suffice? And we have been told by one insurance company that yes, it would. Again, we'll talk a bit more about that. But this morning uh, we put Jai up the mast. I think he's been up the mast about four times now in the last couple of weeks or so. And what Jai is doing is to examine this current state of the rigging to really just identify areas that need improvement or replacement or cleaning or modifying. The upshot of his report was that on the whole everything is in pretty good nick. So you can see here Jai has gone around and he's just put blue tape around the areas that need attention. Much of it is cosmetic so we've got some stainless cleaner which we'll just use to clean up some of these rust spots. But they are not to be ignored. There are a few areas which he said need attention. Specifically the pin, the lower pin on this stay cell here you can see has rusted. Um, so we will probably replace that. That doesn't mean, of course, taking this down or to at least taking this whole section apart. Uh, there's also a couple of areas which potentially could be cracks in the welding, um, but we need to give that a good clean first in order to really examine that. And then we've got the same issue up on the four stay there. You can see that top pin is in a pretty bad way. So we'll probably have to again, take that apart and replace that pin on the main mast this one could be quite difficult to identify but here you can see the shroud the lower there the fitting is not quite running straight so it's putting a bit of strain on the swage there so we need to loosen this off and see if we can shift that so that it is in line and not putting pressure on the swage now john champion identified these in our insurance survey and we need to put some 
Teflon washers in here just to stop that from getting any worse. Uh, guardrails or lifelines as some people call them, these are the cables that run through our stanchion bases. Uh, again, these need replacing, and they're not in a very good way. Other things Jai has identified are things like the shackles at the top of, rather, sorry, the blocks at the top of the mast that hold the halyards. Um, some of the shackles are not great. He said they're not, it's not a big deal, you know, you can get away with their current state, but he would say if you have the money, replace them. The one thing that's bothered me, and it wouldn't really affect a, a reading survey, uh, is the state of the stay cell. If you remember, we were having problems furling away the stay cell, which was uh, odd. We don't normally have that problem. And, uh, but we had a look at the stay cell, uh, the actual stay itself, it is very baggy. What we should be doing, of course, is to tighten that stay. But with our old hood furling system, it is impossible to actually tighten the stay in situ. It is cut to a specific length, so you can't loosen it or tighten it in situ. You have to take it down, take it apart, trim a bit of the cable in order to tighten it. So um, that's one of the things that we're sort of mulling over. Other issues include uh, very, very tight backstays. So I remember when we put the mast back on after our refit, it was very difficult to re-rig the boat very difficult we required a lot of halyards and a lot of people um, with brute force to get various cables to meet fittings on the deck so one idea is to add some toggles onto the backstays which would give us a little bit more length and also allow us to be able to take apart the backstay in order to take off the four stays and so it goes on So as you can see, we've got the calorifier out and um, it, this job is not technically difficult. It's just fiddly, but then we now have access to that other pipe there. I think what we might have to do is to undo the connecting pipe. There's a pipe that runs to the fuel tanks, uh, to, to the engine from the fuel tank along there. So we'll probably have to disconnect that as well. Liz has now got to get into this other tank. Uh, you want the torch as well. Yeah. So we've got uh, the gasket off this side, port side, and this is the one that's not so bad. You can see it's all corroded around the bottom here. Uh, it's, I am reliably informed it's made of nitrile, man-made rubber. And Jamie's going to take this use it as a template for a new one that he's about to make and replace it. Actually, I was going to give that job to you. Oh, were you? Okay. One bar removed. Hurrah! So this is the connecting bar <laughs> taken off. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually bent a little. I think it bends possibly to the shape of the diesel tank, which Really, it shouldn't do, the diesel tank should be nice and straight, but it's not. We've actually put this back on once already, um, but we weren't happy that it would have made a complete seal. So we've taken it out completely. Um, as you can see, there's the one of the gaskets there and another gasket there. What we need to do now is to clean up that exit point there, make it nice and clean, the other one just down there. 
everything is an absolute mess. We are currently staying in the apartments in the marina because we just simply cannot um, spend any time on the boat. Because we've disconnected the calorifier, we have no water, so nothing can be washed up. We can't clean our hands. Look at it. It's an absolute, absolute mess. Horrendous. Just thought I'd show you one of the shittier jobs we have to do on ISPA. Or well, at least I like to keep an eye on it anyway, is the steering cable. As you can see, I've had to empty out the lazarette. Lazarette being the cupboard at the back of the boat. That. Would you believe it? We can get all of this stuff in there. So I just want to show you exactly what I'm doing. So it's not a hydraulic cable, it's just a standard steel cable so the first thing to do is just to check the condition of that cable just give me one minute whilst i dive in here <coughs> actually emptied it out this morning lazarettes are very very wet places quite a lot of rain gets in and it's not a place to store uh, things that might corrode so we tend to keep plastic based things in here whether they are big tubs of oil um, extra line extra plumbing pipe that kind of thing because as you can see it doesn't take long for it to get wet and a little bit rusty so what we have here is the steering quadrant there's the rudder and this is the steering quadrant and we have a cable which goes through that red sheath in there that goes into the boat it comes out the back onto the quadrant itself. Now, sometimes this cable will stretch and it stretches over time. This cable here is held in by this long bolt with a hook on the end. It goes through the back of the quadrant and on the back are two nuts. Now you can see one of them, but the other one is actually hidden inside here. So we put the second one on just to keep the first nut in place. But over time it does loosen and occasionally this cable actually jumps off. We lose it off the back of the uh, quadrant. It's held in the corner with a pin there. So it doesn't come off completely, but sometimes it slips off. And this is quite often because it has worked itself a little bit loose. So I'm just trying to tighten these, but you can see that whilst I might be able to get to the first nut, very difficult to get into the second one. Fortunately, you can get socket sets with an extended socket on it like that. So I'm hoping that's gonna allow me to get into the end there. I think I've just got just enough space, but I'm gonna have to put the camera down to do this. But anyway, just gives you an idea of the kind of sweaty jobs and like the fuel tank this is not technically difficult but it's just awkward and fiddly and back breaking and sweaty that was absolutely filthy that lazarette lazarette but well, yeah well that's your job isn't it cool i hope you cleared it up before you put everything back because i don't remember doing that myself that's good we've got to take it out again and clear oh, it up yeah. again yeah yeah, well, a lot of that mess in the lazarette is actually left over from the refits. There's lots of splodges of paint and um, uh, fiberglass and epoxy, but yeah, it needs a bit of a clean. Yeah, but... and there was a bit of um, rust as well. Yeah, well, as I said in the video, you know, the lazarette gets very, very wet. So uh, we have to keep all the things that could potentially get damaged by salt water in the boat. Mm. So we just keep things like the plastics and what have you. And our new spare anchor will go in there as well. Oh, yeah, so we will have a good old clean up, won't we? Yeah, so as you saw in this week's episode, quite a few of the jobs we're doing at the moment are non-technical, just back-breaking stuff. And as for that diesel leak, oh man, that's, we're talking in real time here mm. and we know that there is more to this story <laughs> than what you saw in this episode. Mm. It really is plaguing us. It's becoming a real 
headache. It's been a long and violent learning curve. Mm, it has. But the good news is, as you saw, that we looks like we won't actually have to re-rig, which is mm. great news. So we've got Jai on the case and we're just going through and just doing some little repairs and yeah. some changes to the rigging that should hopefully see us good. And uh, as we said, our rigging looks like it's still in really good nick. Yeah, I mean, it was put on by Oyster. Uh, well, we, we put it on, but we got the stainless steel from Oyster. And they say that the stuff we can get here will do the job, but it won't be anywhere as good, yeah. just as you say. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, good result. Well, there we go. So that's the end of this week's episode. Very technical and lots of uh, boat maintenance. So for you guys who love the sailing, we're going to be doing it soon. There's we going are, to be loads of it as well. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. And if you think you're frustrated by the lack of sailing in our videos lately, imagine how we feel. It is really frustrating. But the important thing is, is that we are getting this boat ready for a very, very big trip. Yeah. And that is why we just want to make sure we do everything right yeah. now. Yeah, we're being really, really careful about it. And of course, the other thing that's really depressing is the weather. Look at this. It's like being back in England. It really is. In fact, you saw in the episode, there were quite a few different scenes up the mast. Cloudy days, sunny days. We've had some horrendous squalls coming through at the yeah, moment. It's that time of the year, though. It's the southwest monsoons kicking in across the North Indian Ocean, and we get it here. So that's the way yeah. it goes. There we go. There we go. It's all good, really. Not really complaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if you like the video, then please do like it, hit that like button and share it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And in the meantime, peace and fair winds. Mm.